after the battle of Dante versus Yami resulted in Yami being captured by Xenon, everything changed in Black Clover, the backbone of the Black Bulls, and the man who was known to always be at war with his bowel movements seemed to have finally met his match. His body and his magic would be used to unleash the underworld onto the world of the living, and devils would roam the world once again. As more time passed on, more and more powerful devils will be unleashed on the world and with each new devil that was thrown at our heroes it seemed as if the group assembled to save yami would fail in their endeavor to do so yami's death seemed like it was an absolute certainty and it seemed like black clover was finally going to get the first real death that would truly shake up the fandom because it would finally be the death of a beloved character who died not characters that most of the fandom don't really care about and then Tabata pulled a fast one on us. Yami is alive. Stop the cap. <laughs> Stop the cap right now. Stop the cap. Now, to be honest with you, as somebody who wanted Yami to die, I was 100% on board with Yami dying. I thought that it would have a lot of impact from a narrative perspective, and I thought that it could work wonders for the story of Black Clover. In a series like Black Clover, where we've seen so many fake outs for characters who appear to be dead, like, say, Julius Nova Chrono, but then we turn around and find out that they're alive, and it was some miraculous ass pull for why they lived. It felt like we were finally going to get that monumental moment in the series that would just shatter everyone's hearts. It would be like that moment in Naruto where Jiraiya died and it just ripped out everybody's gut. And then you see the ramifications after that when Naruto's holding the popsicles and he's crying on the bench. It really felt like we were rocketing towards a moment like that. However, I can say that in a way, Yami living does make a lot of sense. I don't say this as a diss to Black Clover, though I'm sure there's going to be somebody who hears this and wrongfully assumes the opposite. But Yami Living is something that I'm 100% okay with because it reminds me of a series that I absolutely love, Fairy Tale. What did he say? Are you fucking kidding me? I know Fairy Tale is notorious with many fans for being a series that's afraid to kill off members of the main cast or characters who have any sort of importance. However, here's why I believe not killing Yami works and why it does give off vibes of fairy tale, but in a good way. So in order to understand why I'm coming to this conclusion, you got to understand why Hiro Masuma wrote fairy tale in the way that he did. So Hiro Masuma's first series, Rave Master, was a bit of a heavy series. It starts off slow, but it's a very heavy series for some of the concepts it was using. So the main character, Ellie, was in search of her memory. And the key to unlocking her memory was visiting the grave of somebody who died 50 years prior. And it would be after that that the series would take a bit of a darker turn, especially towards the end. Fairy Tale was then created in response to be a lighthearted response to Rave Master, one where it felt like a journey with friends was going on, where friends could laugh and enjoy each other's company. However, that was only the beginning. And then for Black Clover, the reason why this approach works so well is we are in a situation where in Black Clover Chapter 313, we see how Yami was shaped up to be the man that we know him to be today. We see him getting his grimoire, being told by Julius that his magic was wonderful despite the fact that it was dark magic. We saw how each of the Magic Knight captains reacted to his magic. We see how he was able to come to the conclusion that he wanted to form his own Magic Knight squad selecting people whose society had given up on so as to give them a home where they actually belong. It perfectly explains his fascination for wanting them to push past their limits. Yami knew that for people who were already on the bottom, for them to truly be respectable one day, they would have to work harder, a lot harder than anyone else in order to even get half the results of their Magic Knight peers. And Yami wanted an environment where all of that would be okay in the sense that their progress would happen when it happened but until they're able to reach their peak versions of themselves yami himself would be strong enough to support them just like when it felt like all hope was lost just like when it felt like yami was on the edge of giving up it was the voices and the chaos that was caused by the black bulls that caused them to get a renewed lease on life I personally believe that this is where Black Clover edges out fairy tale. This isn't some plot convenience power up a friendship ass pool. If you think that, I respectfully disagree. In fact, if Yami would have broken out on his own upon hearing the voices of the Black Bulls, then and only then 
could this be considered an ass pull? And if that was the case, then there's only one outcome for where this story needs to go. Know your fucking place, trash. I think we all can agree that that would be some pretty suspect writing. However, I do think pushing off or trading off Yami's death in exchange for Yami being able to see the growth of his Black Bull squad fully assemble already having pushed through their limits i believe that this is the true payoff if you're going to bait and switch fans with a death it has to at least at the very least feel like it's earned otherwise fans are going to feel very cheated with that payoff that you're giving them for the first time all the members of the squad that yami assembled have made their way here and they're working together with their vice captain all the way down to the devil possessed asta the Black Bulls are Yami's legacy, and now they are beginning to truly live up to what he hoped that they could be. It's up to Yami to help mold them into the next phase of their journeys as Magic Knights. The ones who have the potential to be Magic Knight captains have to be molded in Yami's image, while also allowing them to walk their own path forward. Once that's done, Yami, should he actually be up for being killed later on, Yami can be the next victim of the Coffin Dance meme. And if that does truly happen, then this journey will be over and it will be a journey that we all can agree will be true to his character. A man who once told his crew that they need to push past the limits has now watched his squad reach their highest points. A man who needed to be strong for his crew now has a crew that is strong enough to stand on their own. Everything will come full circle and it's a very poetic payoff. However, that's just my thoughts on this matter, guys. Let me know how you feel about Yami still being alive down in the comment section below. But as always, guys, if you like anything I had to say, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for watching until then. Have an awesome day, guys.